Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be talking about a large storm that'll be coming to the United States early next week. And this is going to bring the potential for several days of severe storms to areas like the northern and central plains, the Midwest, and then eventually going towards the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. We'll also be talking about the temperature trend over the next seven days and why a heat wave is likely back over in the Midwest, and also the tropical Tropics are very quiet right now, at least in the Atlantic Ocean, but we do think in September we are going to see some big storms, and we're going to talk more about that later in this forecast. Let's begin with what's happening across the United States right now, and overall it's been pretty quiet for most of the lower 48. We obviously haven't been live in over a week now, and there hasn't really been a whole lot of severe weather. Right now we're just looking at some showers and thunderstorms anywhere from the northern plains back towards areas like Oklahoma. That's mostly spinning around this high pressure system, and that's continuing to penetrate moisture across the four corner states and that's leading to more flooding concerns for many of those areas but overall there has not been much severe weather as of late back over in Florida we also have a stationary frontal boundary that is continuing to bring plenty of showers and thunderstorms even today to areas like Florida they've been kind of leaking a little bit into southeast Georgia but overall this stationary frontal boundary obviously has not been moving much as it is stationary further back off to the northeast we also have an, uh, an upper level uh, low pressure system back over in New England, and this is keeping things a little bit cooler for the time being across the Ohio Valley and Northeast, but once that low pressure system leaves, we are going to see that heat really start to build across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley as we go into this weekend, which we'll talk more about here in just a second. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that's currently impacting the United States and that large storm that will be coming to the United States as we go into the weekend and early next week. Beginning with the jet stream, this is the upper level dynamics here across the United States. First thing I do want to point out is that we do have a very dominant high pressure system across the Great Plains. This is what's keeping areas very dry and as well as warm across the Southern Plains, especially in Texas and New Mexico. Also, here's your low pressure system back over in the Northeast that's really only just bringing some cloud cover. In addition to that, it's also bringing that cooler air out of Canada, which has been kind of sitting over the Ohio Valley and Northeast for the last few days. But slowly but surely, this high pressure system is going to kind of take over and bring that warmer air over over to areas like the Ohio Valley and Midwest. Back over just to the west of Oregon, we also have a low pressure system that is beginning to intensify, um, and this is going to be our next big storm, especially for the northern plains. And you'll see that as we go into this weekend, this low pressure system will be very slow moving, but as we get closer to Sunday and Monday, it is going to eventually move into the northern plains. And this should allow for several days of severe weather, beginning Saturday, probably running all the way through Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. But here's the thing with this. It is not expected to be a severe weather outbreak maker, at least as of right now. One thing I would be concerned about, though, is the wind threat that could come out of storms that develop out of this low pressure system. We are in the time of year where we do get complexes of thunderstorms like mesoscale convective systems that bring better shots for damaging winds and even sometimes embedded tornadoes. That's really going to be the concern, I think, for Sunday and Monday across parts of the northern plains in the Midwest, and we could see that translate into Tuesday into Wednesday. Here's what we're looking at by late Monday night to Tuesday. Tuesday, this will be a negatively tilted trough, and what that means is that we have a strong southerly pull of moisture, so there's going to be lots of moisture back over in the northern plains and the Midwest that'll allow for severe weather, and in addition to that, we are going to be seeing a lot more spin in the atmosphere, so any discrete cells that do develop will have a better shot at producing an isolated tornado threat. By the time we go into Wednesday and to Thursday, we are going to see another storm behind this one. This particular storm probably will not bring nearly as much in terms of severe weather but I do think it'll bring a bigger cool down, especially to areas in the Northern Plains and the Midwest, and then eventually the Ohio Valley as colder air starts to come out of Canada. We are starting to get closer to September. We're obviously still in summer, but we are going to start to see more of these cool downs as we head into September. So this will probably be the first of many to come. Now let's talk more about that severe weather potential for the next several days and we'll begin with today, which is tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday. We do currently have a slight risk for severe weather back over in parts of the high plains where there will be an elevated chance for some damaging winds and hail another marginal threat in northern Arizona back through parts of Utah and Nevada where there will be also a chance for some damaging winds by the time we go into Friday that threat of severe weather will shift a little bit off to the north where we have another couple of marginal threats for severe weather again these are going to be relatively low end days with just wind and hail I'm not really expecting much of a tornado risk though there is always a chance for an isolated tornado it's just virtually very low once we go into Saturday 
things are going to start to uptick, I think, just the slightest in the northern plains, where there will be a slightly better shot for damaging winds and even some hail back from Nebraska and Kansas into parts of North Dakota and another marginal threat in the four corner states. Now, where things will start to ramp up a bit, I think, is Sunday and Monday. We already have a slight risk for severe weather on the day four outlook across parts of North and South Dakota. And by the way, we have not seen a day four or day five slight risk in a while. So this is actually something that we've not seen. And it feels like months now, but uh, this is the return of at least a day four slight risk back over in North and South Dakota. Main concern for Sunday will be wind and hail, maybe an isolated tornado risk. Monday, we also have a day five slight risk for severe weather in Wisconsin, Minnesota, parts of Iowa, and even back through parts of South Dakota, where there will be another shot for damaging winds and even some embedded tornadoes will be a possibility if we do indeed get a complex or a line of thunderstorms, which is what I'm thinking will be more of what's geared towards Monday. Now, beyond Monday, there are no risks outlined by the Storm Prediction Center, but the Ohio Valley would be the next area to watch for and parts of the Midwest on Tuesday. Again, I'm not really seeing any signs of a full-blown outbreak right now, and I don't see any days right now that we would probably even be live for. So right now, does not look super concerning in my books, but we are definitely watching this in case it does go a little bit more rogue as we get closer, as negatively tilted troughs can sometimes be underpredictable, and they are usually a bit more intense when it comes to severe weather. So let's go through the future radar to put this into more simplistic terms over the next several days. Beginning with Friday and Saturday, things will stay relatively dry across basically the entire area that's east of the Rocky Mountains. The only exception will really just be Florida, and then perhaps a few pop-up thunderstorms like late Friday night to Saturday across parts of like Iowa. But again, not really anything too concerning. By the time we go into late Saturday, a few more storms will be possible in parts of Canada back into North Dakota. By Sunday, we are going to start to see some more storm activity ramp up, I think, especially back over in North Dakota. And then by the time we go into Monday and as well as into Tuesday, that is when more organized threats for severe weather will exist, especially back over in Minnesota and Wisconsin, where there will be a potential for damaging winds and again, maybe an isolated tornado threat. We could see some storms going to Michigan and maybe even Ohio into Tuesday morning. But again, that really remains uncertain as we are still about five to six days out from that. Once we go into Tuesday into Wednesday, there will be probably at least one more shot for some severe storms, either in the Midwest or the Ohio Valley out of this low pressure system. But overall, does not look to be anything out of the ordinary for this time of the year, just mostly a wind threat. By the time we go into Wednesday into Thursday, I think we're going to have a better and more organized trough that should be able to bring some more severe weather to the Midwest on either Wednesday or Thursday of next week. The you know intensity of this and as well as how widespread severe weather is remains highly uncertain, but I do think we'll have another shot of damaging winds and maybe an isolated tornado or two sometime next week, and that would probably be towards the tail end of the week across the Ohio Valley and the Midwest. And then by the time we go into Saturday, that low pressure system continues to move to the east. One thing I do want to point out is that there will be a cold front that extends all the way back down to Oklahoma and Texas, so we actually could have a strong cold front for this time of the year, usher in cold air as far south as Oklahoma and maybe even Texas. So this is definitely something to watch for, not just for the storms, but also for the temperature trend that it could definitely change here as we go into next week. Here's what the European model currently shows for the temperature anomaly. So colder than average weather for the East Coast right now. Again, heat wave continues in Texas and New Mexico. That heat is going to build over the next few days across the Midwest and the Northern Plains. And by Monday, you're going to be thinking we want winter. And I definitely agree with you. I want winter as well. Once we go into Tuesday into Wednesday, that heat just continues to build anywhere east of the Rocky Mountains. But we should start to get colder air by next weekend. And that should usher in across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. And there will likely be some cold air that mixes into the Southern Plains. But overall, does not look to be a super big cool down like from 90s to 60s, for example. It'll probably only be like a 5 to 10 degree drop for most areas. Now, just a quick tropics update. There are currently no tropical storms or hurricanes expected in the Atlantic Ocean over the next seven days. I would be watching, though, a tropical wave coming off Africa here pretty soon. That'll be our next system to watch for, and we could start to see our next tropical storm or hurricane develop. Where it goes remains highly uncertain, as it would be over 10 days from now, but we'll be having to watch that closely as we are getting closer to the peak of hurricane season. Now, the Pacific Ocean is not really something we talk about much because a lot of the hurricanes that develop here don't impact land, but we actually have Hurricane Gilma, which has been rapidly intensifying. It will be heading towards Hawaii, and this actually could be still a tropical storm or depression by the time it reaches Hawaii by next week. So we'll have to watch that closely. And then we also have an area of development that'll probably just become a quick tropical storm just to the east of Hawaii, and then it'll kind of fizzle out. So definitely interesting stuff here. We'll be keeping a close eye on Gilma as it does continue.
continue to move to the west. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.